card and update, 23rd of October 2024. Excuse the construction sounds in the background. This is the side garden bed. Obviously needs to do a lot more, a lot more weeding. I have cleaned out this little area here though, but a bit more to do, but at least some of the flowers are coming back in now. So that's nice. The driveway garden bed. The aquilegia are coming up. They're actually coming up all along here, so it's looking quite nice. The alyssum coming up. Gladioli getting ready to burst into colour. The hebe, oh, looks like there's a, another plant in between there. I think some wheat as well to get into there, but anyway. But the hebe's got its nice little bundles of colour there. Excuse the car coming through. Right, Collegian, this one's actually got a dual colour, which is quite interesting. Bit of a mix. More Aquilegia. Some other plants in between. Yet more Aquilegia and more colours. There we go, so we go around the side. I've done some weeding here, believe it or not, as I noticed another big weed there. Anyway, this area still needs quite a bit of work. The idea, of course, is getting the hedge plants to grow up and create, funnily enough, a hedge. A bit more review there. I think this is a plum tree, but I'm not sure it is yet to actually develop fruit. But it does get those little black bugs, which I think are called pear bugs, campers, I'm not sure, but anyway. The bees are loving the lavender. They buzz around, which is good. Okay, there's a little bit of a snip, but not too much. Got a poppy growing there. On the other side. Again, the bees all over it. Again, a few more weeds in there that I need to pull out. The viburnum will come along nicely. This is a new bed I've put in primarily for sunflowers. So the idea is to have a nice little sort of wall of sunflowers there. See how that's going. One of my apple trees that's doing all right. Ooh, there's a rose that's come out there. And yet another aquilegia. My lilies coming along there. These are the fours of red ones so they should be nice when they pop up. Ignore the Daffodil there, or whatever, not daffodil, yeah, dandelion. A number of nigella coming in there. The dianthus all starting to spring up. The hollyhock coming back again. And I think I found, ah, there we go. Here we have the, uh, the dahlia, as you can see, it's water there, or dahlia, depending on what area of the world you're from. So those are the ones that were from seed, as in actual seed packet. They're not big ones, so they're not as showy, but this is going to be the third year they've been here, I think. And a Peter, another uh, gladioli, the experimental regenerative area. There's obviously a few weeds in there. There are also oh, some antenna plant. That I think is actually uh, part of a a tree trying to regrow, so I'll get rid of that. This area has become a bit overgrown with weeds, as you can see. There were hollyhocks here. I don't know if they're going to come back, although I guess that's one coming back. So I was swatting away a bug and accidentally pressed stop. And I was just saying the hollyhock there is actually coming back. So it'll be around. That's in the peter there. Oh, the lupins are actually starting to flower, so that's nice. Big wall of those there. And yet more aquilegia. And what I love about Aquilegia is the difference in the flowers. So these ones have much more of a uh, busy, I guess, flower head, which is quite nice. The snapdragons, which come back year after year, which is nice. Bugs flying around the most, but annoying. The alyssum, which has always been a nice carpet of colour there, which is good. Ooh, ooh hang on. There's a nigella there. One of my roses, these are the ones I actually bought and placed here 
which I like because it reminds me of um, Raspberry Ripple. I have a feeling it's possibly called something like that too. The original Lilliums. I cannot remember what they're called at the moment, as in the particular variety, but there we go. Sense all coming up. And the bird bath bed. Still got a nice bit of colour there. A number of the flowers obviously have died back, but other ones are coming in creating a bit of colour, which is good. The, the poor lime is sort of still hanging on, but not looking great. It'll probably die off, and that's okay. The lemon, on the other hand, is doing fine. And now we'll go around the back. The veggie garden. The vast majority of that is actually intended crops. It was a bit, a bit of a surprise to me. I'm used to it being mostly weed, but lots and lots of brassicas. A number of carrots in there. You can also see another... Well, if I get my hand out of the way so I can focus. There's another poppy over there. A bunch of alliums sort of spaced in amongst the carrots, as I think mentioned in previous videos. Another poppy here. I'm growing there. That's obviously a bolted lettuce that can come out at some point, but I'm leaving it there for the moment. It's not, I don't need that space at the moment. Uh, far more brassicas here. I'll step up into the garden area. A few weeds as well, because it's not entirely without weeds. But the green grape, or the white grape, I think they're called, has come back. It's actually got these little buds on it, so hopefully we might get fruit this year. It did get a little bit last year, but not didn't have a chance to grow enough to really provide a crop so hopefully this year it'll do well and it might continue growing along there and I'll chain along that bit of rebar as well hopefully so I'll see if I can spot oh yep there we go one of my cauliflowers and I'll do the trick that hasn't been mentioned things just snap one of the leaves over to help keep it white <laughs> it sounds very racist when you say that way but it's just Otherwise, it discolours and becomes a bit sort of yellow. Excuse me, there's a bug on me. Some green broccoli here, which looks like it's just starting to go to flower. I think so. I have to pick that and I can make room. I actually, have some celery this year, which is a bit of a, a different crop for me. Have that a bit of a try. Oh, in here, as well as some carrots, I was just looking and you can see it's forming a, a scape there. That sounds a bit easier. I believe these are actually onions, so they're not forming particularly big heads, but I did harvest a couple of them not too long ago, and they, they came out fine. They're all right. Excuse the barking dog. Now, I believe these are my garlic that were planted from uh, cloves from supermarket garlic, but I think these might actually be second or third generation, so I planted, uh, planted them the previous year, saved some of the cloves and replanted. Uh, they don't look overly strong, but they're in a bit of a shaded corner, which could be why. Got a, a leak here. Now this, I'm almost wondering if this is a cabbage, but otherwise this is probably another uh, cauliflower. A number of little flies on there. I don't think they're anything to worry about. A number of self-sown potatoes in amongst here, which is all good. And there we go. I might see if I can step through the garden bit. As you can see, got a nice bit of a carrot head forming there. Actually, I might as well pull that one up, because why not? A ah, little stumpy one, but that's all right. If nothing else, they might go to the horse, or the horses, where I get my horse poo from. I sort of asked the, the person if they were happy enough to receive some bits and pieces of crops and stuff. They said, yeah, of course, that'll be fine. I'll step through this way, Oop. turn around. The rhubarb plant is doing quite nicely there. And a very nice side, if I can find them. The, oh, there we go. My gooseberry bush has some gooseberries forming. So that'll be good. Certainly very nice. <laughs> Compost heap here. I pick some carrots and then they don't get eaten. They get a bit sort of wilting. I thought, well, they can just join the, the compost heap to fuel the garden in the future. But there's also a lot of leaves in the brassicas because, of course, they're very big, which is good. Uh, this is basically just a, a pile of soil that I dug up from, I think, the front when I was making one of the garden beds. I've kind of changed the technique now, just putting stuff over the top rather than digging out the underlay, but that'll just keep 
decomposing hopefully there and maybe hopefully eventually become some soil to use for cropping. So let's have a quick overview of this bit. It's a nice bit of colour in the summer there. This is the newer, or one of the newer beds. So this is the Jostaberry. I've not grown it before, so it'll be a bit interesting. Just have a quick squeeze if there are any obvious fruits on there. Nothing that I can see, but that's all right. I'll shuffle down. What we have at the back here, this is a cutting from the gooseberry. The gooseberry plant was getting a bit over uh, overgrown, so I just cut off a whole bunch of things. Look, I'll just stick it in the ground. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You can see there are obviously other ones that didn't, but that one did, so that's all right. Got the blueberry here. Overexposed there. Um, it has had a lot of these flowers on it, so hopefully that means it'll develop fruit, but we shall see. Now, the wild corner, the sweet peas are coming along quite nicely. There's a nice bit of colour there, and as you might be able to see in the corner there, foxglove. First time I've grown it. So this is, this is kind of the poison corner, really, because foxglove is supposed to be toxic and sweet peas are supposed to be toxic, but I think. The degree of toxicity is a bit overstated. I don't think they're overly dangerous. As long as you don't sort of put them in your mouth or anything like that, you should be fine. And this hollyhock, which has been here for, I think it's the second year for it, starting to get its flower heads there. And my alyssum, which again has been there for quite some time. The pond needs topping up again, but otherwise it's doing all right. The lily, lily pad leaves come green again. Some of them obviously haven't, but I have picked a few of those out just to clear it up a bit. But uh, that's coming along alright. A lot of dianthus here. And I'm not entirely sure what that blue flare is. It might be connected to that little bush which I put in a few months ago, I think. Uh, it was one of the ones picked up from one of the, the garden place, probably just in the, the local hardware store garden section. But that's all good. My raspberries are coming in nicely. So this time I actually did the right thing and I actually chopped them right down in between times. The bamboo, which was seeming like it was completely dead, it's got a little bit of colour there, but more importantly, there's some new growth there and here, and this star of the show here, and there's actually another one over here. There was a further one here, but it actually, I think, got a bit rotted or something, so it, it basically snapped off. But I, then I found this one over here, and this one is definitely coming along nicely. So I haven't killed it. And there's, there's probably a lesson in that about plants may not necessarily be dead, even though they seem like they probably are. Basically, the, the notion there is just give them a bit of extra chance to come good, and they may well do. Who knows? The Granny Smith apple trees. So this is a store-bought one. Basically, it's a, a grafted one. Uh, and it's supposed to be self-pollinating. And indeed... It has some apples forming. Uh, it has had them form that similar sort of amount in previous years and then they just haven't come to full fruition. Uh, but I'm hoping that this year it does. I think it's about the third, maybe the fourth year I've had it. I think third. So there's some other ones forming right there. Now, <laughs> this monstrosity is still here. Uh, it, there are a bunch of cables that sort of go um, in different proximities to it that make it very hard to try and cut it down so I can't cut it down at a lower level it has to be done kind of top down now I've got an extension ladder and I put that up recently to try and see if I could cut it down my thought was that I might be able to climb up the top of that and get an extension pruner well climbing up I don't know if you can actually see but there's a branch up there that I did cut off at the full extension of it but the problem with the extension ladder is it doesn't feel overly stable and even sort of strapping it to the tree I still wasn't overly cable once I started soaring and it's a good few more metres beyond that, and that trunk is actually quite thick, even further up, which is the concern. Um, at an estimate, I think it's about seven metres tall, so I think it's going to have to stay there, and then we might actually have to call in a professional, but it's four to seven hundred dollars, if not more, just to chop down the top level. Further down, I'd be, I'd be fine with it. If it was even just to there, I'm happy enough to cut that and bring that down this way, and then I can do the rest of it myself. But the, the last time I cut off a branch, which was down here, it fell that way and broke the apricot tree, which is actually doing fine, by the way. It's got some fruit on it, so that's all right. But yes, that, that needs to be sorted out at some point. But anyway, into the greenhouse. Uh, I do have some things in here that are not going so well, but 
what I've done in this little one is uh, oh, so it's disappear. Is it hiding? Oh, there we go. There's a little oh, growing there, a giant pumpkin. These bits were actually the handles on basically punnet, punnet trays, or plant trays from the the uh, local store. Essentially, because um, they had multi punnets and things like that, and the back, as you can see, it's just a nice white. I used those because these actual store-bought ones, they tend to get flimsy and snap after a while. I'm hoping these don't, but we'll see. And either way, it's reusing, so it's all fine. Oh, there's a little one growing there too. So that's that should be watermelon, and that should be giant pumpkin. These giant pumpkins, the packet says, they can grow up to be roughly about beach ball size, up to 50 kilograms. So I'm not growing those for eating, because I suspect they probably won't be the best for eating, but my youngest likes the idea of doing the whole Halloween pumpkins. Now we're in Australia and I don't know how long a pumpkin is going to last. Having said that, <laughs> that's a butternut pumpkin slash squash and has got a little bit of decay in it now, but that's been sitting in here since early this year actually after the crops and things had finished. So there's a reasonable chance that we might be able to get something of that uh, and then we can have a play around with it. But I might grow those, if I've got enough of them, I might grow some of those behind my garage where it's basically it's overrun with sticky weed i tried to stifle it but it didn't really work but if i can put a pumpkin in there and it gets started it should grow perfectly fine and it's set and forget as it were i will water that later but i'll leave it for now there we go this one i think is the one that uh, i accidentally let go and so the i think those are capsicum aka peppers or bell peppers specifically i think they've kind of dried off so i need to redo that but that's right that means i've got another propagator i can use this similar sort of situation this is just cuttings to the one in front those are basically dried off and dead a little bit of green in that maybe it's alive i don't know it doesn't really matter it's all just little prunings anyway um <laughs> this one again it's been drying off and dying off. that's right i have actually already grabbed a number of these these are basically corn these are my corn saved from a F1 hybrid corn from Packet, it was like a sweet corn. Uh, I grew them, I think, three, maybe four years ago now, and I saved one cob that had a nice lot of kernels on it, grew them the following year, did the same again. And this one actually, I think, is the cob from two years ago. So it's the same corn that I grew last year, maybe even the year before that, but at least the same as last year's. And it's coming out fine. Um, as to whether the corn cobs will come up nicely, I don't know, but uh, previous years, they've been a bit hit and miss, but there's been enough on them to have a decent feed anyway. Uh, Audrey's still going fine. Oop. As the focus stands. These are some spare celery. Um, they can go out at some point, but I'm not super fussed. This is actually an eggplant slash aubergine that has been... <laughs> overwintered from last year with actually a bunch of green flies on it. Um, let's just do that. Um, anyway, this I suspect is probably a nectarine. It's certainly a stone fruit anyway, and it's most likely one that I put in there, forgot what it was, and it seems to be growing, so it can do what it does. This is, I suspect, a completely dead kiwi fruit. I think I overwatered it, and then I thought, ah, oh, maybe I can get it to come back, but I don't think that's coming back. Having said that, these are two kiwi fruit, so these will be my, well, hopefully the ones that survive and, and last. I thought this was a, a rosemary, but I'm not so sure now, actually, having a look at the leaves, I'm not entirely sure what that is. This one is my tea plant. It's literally referred to as a tea plant. Uh, it doesn't actually say what it is there. I did have the label around somewhere. But basically it's... Oh, there it is. Ha ha. There we go. Camellia. Tea plant. Uh, Camellia sinensis, I believe it is. So it's... It even says it there. Camellia sinensis. So this is the plant that is responsible for tea. And I'm a big tea drinker. So oop, the hope is... Let's actually snap this. I'll just twist that off. Um, I'll use my finger now. The hope is that I can grow this and then maybe propagate it and actually get a few of these uh, and then just make my own cups of tea occasionally. Still obviously going to buy bags. I'm not going to have enough of this to <laughs> sustain uh, the tea drinking we have in our household, but it's just a bit of fun to, to do that. Over here, the wild side. So I've got 
some alpine strawberries here, which are doing quite nicely. They've been in here since last year, so they're just overwintered basically. The avocado tree is still doing, doing quite nicely. Every now and then some of the leaves brown like that, that's fine. The rest of it comes good. Pineapple is still going. The tomato, the tomato, it's a tomato that's self-seeded here and it's growing up next to it. So I thought, okay, fine, it can stay there. I've got my string going up to the roof, so I'll hang out there, that's fine. Bells of Ireland, they're going along all right. Again, more of listen, because I love it. This, oh, there's a butterfly there. A bit stuck there, I can't actually open that window. At best, there's a fly screen, so it'll have to find its own way out. But the door's open, it'll, it's got a chance. This viburnum has had its flowers, and I think it's just getting a bit hot in here, so it's dropping the rest of them, but that's okay. More, <laughs> yet more cauliflower. See, this one's actually gone a little bit yellow, but that's fine. And there's another one in the corner there. These are more cuttings. So in here, I've actually got gooseberry and raspberry, just for a bit of fun. Again, it's just simply cutting the bits off, and they seem to be doing all right. I don't know if I can actually help my butterfly out. Probably not. There you go. Just settle down there. I'll leave the door open for it for a while let's see how it goes so now the infamous don't look weeds don't look don't look don't look not not looking there nothing to see here nothing to see here uh, blah, 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 blah. and to the back area so again i say again because i think this one's a plum as well not entirely sure but it is one that i believe i planted from a stone from a plum uh it is yet to fruit i can't remember if it actually got a little bit of blossom like this here or not it may have done and I don't know what sort it is so around certainly around Australia certainly around Victoria it's not uncommon to see on nature strips plum trees they're little I don't know cherry plums or whatever they are they're very small but they're quite nice to have a little refreshing bite as you're walking away somewhere so this may be uh, from a stone of one of those or it could be from the stone of one of the bigger plums that you tend to get in the supermarkets, which I'm hoping it is because they just get more to them. But we shall see. More of the self saved lettuce, which I obviously come back a year again. I suspect there's a bit of nigella next to it. And the other apple trees. So these are ones grown from seed. These are both planted at the same time. They've grown from about the same state. Okay, well, interesting little bug there. Oop. Um... But yeah, this one's obviously grown a lot less than this one has, but they're both doing fine, so that's all right. That's the aforementioned chaos of the um, sticky weed and such. Now over here is a bit of sad news. That's where I had my Dahlia Cafe au lait, and it looks like it's probably rotten there, I suspect. Well, certainly it's not showing signs of coming up. Um, Having said that, I'll just leave it. There's nothing that I need to put in there in its place at the moment. It might just need a bit more time. I don't know. Orange tree grown from seed. That's looking a bit rough, but it's got a bit of fresh growth on it, so that's okay. I put in some alyssum there because I like them as basically as a cover plant. They should sort of fill in the area and uh, hopefully stifle the chance of weeds growing in amongst there. I've actually pulled a bunch of the plants down from here because I suspect they were weeds. I don't remember planting them and they seem to be growing rife through it so I suspect that's what they were so I just pulled them out. Um, these two are next rain trees. This one's the longest standing one. It is one that I grew from seed. Every year it gets the leaf curl. It just looks horrible. I didn't have enough of the mixture uh, this time around to use the copper liquid copper sulfate on it. So it's looking quite horrendous. Even the ones in the front yard have curled anyway because I think I was a bit late and I didn't do a second application because I thought it was a bit too late for it anyway. So the hebe here hasn't developed all those lovely flowers on the front, but this is the plant that was in there basically filling up all that space there. You can see it's got little seeds there. And that's just run rampant through here, so I need to still pull more of those out. But anyway, that's okay. So there was another dahlia in here uh i think in there or it might have been over there either spot it, it hasn't really shown signs of coming up either but again it might come up through there and still come good we shall see a listen there i believe that's probably a ranunculus i think i have had one in here so it might be growing 
might have self-seeded because I don't know if they actually overwinter. I can't remember what this plant is, but it's filling the space nicely, so I'm leaving it as it is. And behind it, that might actually be a potato plant, which would make sense. They self-seed everywhere. Um, that, though, I think might be from a plant that I don't want growing there. But anyway, there's some viola. Do you want to jump up in there? You can see there's some... Uh, I think these are snow peas. Either that or sugar snap peas, so those are the edible ones. Uh, more dianthus and more nigella. But that is the garden for the 23rd of October 2024. Thank you for watching. Happy gardening.